Ever pondered on why some arguments, despite seeming sound, still feel off? Well, you're not alone. This is where we introduce the fascinating world of logical fallacies. These are errors or bugs in our reasoning that can make an argument appear convincing even when it's not. They're like optical illusions of the mind, tricking us into believing something that's not necessarily true. They come in many shapes and sizes, and they're more common than you might think. From political speeches to advertising and even casual conversations, logical fallacies are everywhere, often going unnoticed. By understanding these fallacies we can sharpen our critical thinking skills, peel back the layers of deception, and get closer to the truth. We can become more discerning listeners, more persuasive communicators, and more rational thinkers. So, buckle up and put on your thinking caps. Keep up as we journey through the labyrinth of logical fallacies. Have you ever dismissed someone's viewpoint simply because of who they are? This, my friends, is the gateway to understanding the ad hominem fallacy, a common misstep in reasoning that we've all likely stumbled upon at one point or another. In Latin, ad hominem means to the person. In the context of logical fallacies it refers to the act of attacking the person making an argument, rather than addressing the argument itself. It's the conversational equivalent of playing the player, not the game. Let's delve into an example to make this clearer. Imagine you're at a health seminar, and the speaker, a doctor, is giving advice on maintaining a balanced diet. Now this doctor, despite his medical expertise, is noticeably overweight. You find yourself thinking, why should I listen to him? He can't even keep himself in shape. And just like that, you've fallen into the trap of the ad hominem fallacy. You see, the doctor's weight, as striking as it may be, has no bearing on the validity of his advice. His personal health does not negate his professional knowledge. He may very well provide excellent advice on healthy eating, despite not following it himself. By focusing on his weight, rather than his words, you're sidestepping his argument entirely. The ad hominem fallacy can be quite deceptive, often dressed up as a relevant criticism. But remember, a good argument stands on its own merits, not on the virtues or vices of the person making it. It's important to separate the message from the messenger. In a world where we're constantly bombarded with information and viewpoints, it's easy to let biases and prejudices cloud our judgment. But to truly engage in effective discourse, we must learn to recognize and avoid these logical fallacies. So, the next time you find yourself tempted to dismiss an argument based on the person presenting it, pause and consider if you're falling prey to the ad hominem fallacy. Remember, an argument's validity is independent of the arguer's character. Have you ever found yourself misrepresenting someone else's argument to make it easier to attack? If so, you may have just discovered the straw man fallacy, a common but misleading tactic in debates and discussions. The straw man fallacy occurs when a person distorts, exaggerates, or oversimplifies someone else's position or argument, making it easier to attack and debunk. The name straw man comes from the idea of creating a weak or flimsy version of an opponent's argument much like a straw man which is then knocked down with ease. Consider this example. Let's say that person A believes in the importance of balanced diets and regular exercise for maintaining good health. Person B however misrepresents person A's argument by stating, so, you're saying that people should only eat salads and run marathons every day to stay healthy? This is a classic case of the straw man fallacy. Person B has distorted person A's argument to such an extreme that it becomes easier to refute. Or picture a political debate where one candidate exaggerates the other's views to ridiculous extremes. For instance, if candidate A advocates for tighter immigration controls, candidate B might counter by saying, so you're suggesting we should build fortress walls around our country and keep everyone out? This is another straw man in action. Candidate B has blown candidate A's position out of proportion making it seem more extreme and thus easier to attack. The straw man fallacy can be very persuasive, especially to those not familiar with the original argument. It allows the person using it to appear as though they've successfully refuted the other side, when in reality they've only knocked down a distorted version of it. However this fallacy undermines productive dialogue and fosters misunderstanding. It's important to recognize when the straw man is being used, and to call it out. Instead, we should foster a culture of respectful debate, where arguments are understood and represented accurately. So, the next time you're in a debate, remember, don't build straw men. Engage with the real arguments. Always strive to understand and represent arguments accurately. Ever felt trapped between two extremes as if there's no middle ground? 
Welcome to the universe of the false dilemma fallacy, a place where nuance is often forgotten and options are unjustly limited. It's like being at a party and told you can only choose soda or juice when you know there's a whole other world of beverages out there. The false dilemma fallacy, also known as a false dichotomy, is a type of logical fallacy that presents only two options or sides when in fact there are more. It's a common tactic in debates and arguments, creating a sense of urgency and forcing a choice, often used to manipulate or convince others. Consider the classic example, you're either with us or against us. It's a powerful statement, isn't it? It divides the world into two clear distinct factions, leaving no room for neutrality or a middle ground. But in truth, there are always more sides to a story, more perspectives to consider. Maybe you agree with some aspects, but not all, or perhaps you're still undecided. The world isn't just a binary system, it's multi-dimensional. Here's another example. If you're not a part of the solution, you're a part of the problem. This statement disregards the fact that someone might be neither part of the problem nor the solution, or they might even be trying to find a different solution altogether. The false dilemma fallacy can be persuasive because it simplifies complex issues and appeals to our innate desire for clarity and resolution. But it's a trap we must avoid. It narrows our thinking, limits our options, and oversimplifies the complexity of life. So the next time you hear statements like, you're either for us or against us, or if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem, be wary. Challenge the presumption of only two options. Ask questions. Seek the middle ground. Explore the full spectrum of possibilities. In reality, life offers more than just black and white. It's a spectrum of colors. Ever found yourself swayed by an argument simply because a famous person endorsed it? Welcome to the world of the appeal to authority fallacy. This fallacy occurs when someone asserts a claim as true simply because an authority or celebrity says so, ignoring the fact that experts can be wrong and celebrities are often not experts. Imagine this scenario. A famous basketball player endorses a brand of energy drink. You, being a fan, start believing that this drink must be beneficial for health and performance, but wait a minute, is this basketball player a certified nutritionist or a health expert? Probably not. Then why accept their endorsement as a guarantee of the product's efficacy? This is the essence of the appeal to authority fallacy. Just because someone is popular or holds a position of authority does not automatically make their claims true. So, the next time you see such endorsements, Remember to question the authority. Authority or popularity does not always equate to correctness. So, what should you remember about logical fallacies? Let's recap. Logical fallacies are errors or manipulations in reasoning that make an argument seem valid, but upon closer inspection, it falls apart. We've covered four common types, the ad hominem fallacy, the straw man fallacy, the false dilemma fallacy, and the appeal to authority fallacy. The ad hominem fallacy occurs when someone attacks the person making the argument rather than the argument itself. It's a diversion tactic, a way to distract from the real issue at hand. Remember, an argument's validity is independent of who's presenting it. Next, we have the straw man fallacy. This involves distorting, exaggerating, or completely misrepresenting an opponent's argument to make it easier to attack. It's like building a straw man and then triumphantly knocking it down. Just remember, it's not a real win if you're fighting a fabrication. The false dilemma fallacy is another tricky one. It presents a situation as if there are only two possible options, when in reality, there could be many more. It's a way to force a choice and corner someone into agreeing. Remember, life is rarely black and white. Finally, we talked about the appeal to authority fallacy. This is when someone uses the opinion of an authority figure or expert as the sole proof of their argument. While expert opinions can add weight to an argument, they shouldn't be the only form of evidence. It's important to remember that even experts can be wrong. Understanding logical fallacies is a crucial part of critical thinking. They're everywhere, in politics, in advertising, in everyday conversations. By knowing what they are and how they work, you can avoid being manipulated or falling into faulty reasoning yourself. It's not just about winning arguments, it's about seeking truth and making informed decisions. In the battle of arguments, arm yourself with knowledge, and let logic be your shield. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.